Good morning and welcome to Arlington Community Church where we're called by God to be stewards of creation and to build a just society. This morning we gather together on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. It's the 25th Sunday that we've been joining together through virtual worship. And it is my final Sunday before I take two months of parental leave. My wife and I are expecting our second daughter. Uh, she's due on Wednesday. So things are really coming down to the wire. Today we have a wonderful service in store for you. We have special music from Susan Russell. We have hymns from Shanti, uh, piano music from Tim. I'm going to be reflecting on two passages from the New Testament, both of which kind of use this idea or, or analogy of apocalypse. I'm going to be talking about um, how we might think of that word in relation to all the different crises we're living through today and how that idea of apocalypse, which literally just means uncovering or revealing, might help us live through some of these challenging times. Before we get into our opening hymn, though, I just want to give like a one minute long State of the Union sort of thing. I would do this normally uh, from time to time when we're gathered together in worship, but I think it's important to do uh, just before I, be I give my parental leave. Like I said, this is the 25th Sunday that we have uh, given you virtual worship. I think we figured out a lot of things about what work well, and I think we figured out some things that we want to try in the future. So however long we are prevented from gathering in person, um, we feel good about being able to provide this ministry through the internet. I'm also so, so grateful for all the people who have stepped in and who will step in during my parental leave, all of the guest worship leaders who are going to be taking you through worship each and every week that I'm gone. I'm grateful for Reverend Barry Kammer and Reverend Julie Stockstad, who will be providing pastoral care while I'm away. I'm grateful, too, for our moderator, Linda Young, and our vice moderator, Faith Abel, who will be stepping up to take care of some more administrative tasks while I'm gone, and also for Jacob Day in the office, um, whose workload will increase a little bit as well. Lots of little things to cover, but I'm so, so confident in the way that this church will continue to move forward. And when I look at our programming schedule for September and October, it's already filling up with Bible studies and social hours and labyrinth walks and virtual potlucks. Um, so I just want to lift up and celebrate the fact that the energy around Arlington Community Church um, is continuing to thrive. Um, and I'm grateful to everyone who has been part of that. Okay, I think that's it for the State of the Union. Uh, we're going to worship together today, and I'll say a little goodbye during my words of blessing at the end of this service. Let's join together in our opening hymn.
So I want to share two scriptures with you this morning. They both come from the lectionary, but I was so struck this week reading them by how much they speak to the urgency of this moment. I'm going to preach a little bit about the relationship with the idea of apocalypse in our tradition. Our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it's full of good advice for those who want to make Jesus the center of their lives, but also want to take care of themselves and take care of others. And our reading from Matthew gets to the point in Jesus' journey where he starts to tell the disciples what is really going to happen to him. And he gives them a sense of the urgency and the imminence of, um, of his departure and then his return. So let's listen for a word from God this morning. Our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. This is Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. And I'm reading from the message translation. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. And our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. And again, this comes from the contemporary translation called The Message. Then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and then on the third day be raised up alive. Peter took him in hand, protesting, Impossible, Master, that can never be. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his Father accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky, by and by. Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom glory. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word.
Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with an army of angels, Jesus says in our passage from Matthew today, and some of you standing here are going to see it take place. I've never really known what to make of passages like this in the Bible. Moments where Scripture seems to suggest that there is some some transformation coming soon. Call it the apocalypse. Call it rapture. Call it the end of the world. Jesus certainly talked in certain moments like it was going to happen. Paul wrote in his letters like it was happening soon. And centuries later, Our heroes in the Protestant tradition, Luther and some of the more radical reformers, they thought the apocalypse was imminent as well. That's why they had to work so hard to get things right while there was still time. And now, 500 years after Luther, 2,000 years after Paul, here we are, still trucking along, still here. So were all these religious ancestors just wrong? Did they misinterpret Jesus' message? Were they hindered by lacking some of the science and history that we have now? We know how silly certain groups have looked that have taken this idea of the end times too literally and picked out a date on the calendar, sold all their possessions, woke up the next morning. Uh Uh-oh, do I get a do-over? And more than that, we know how dangerous it can be to to use this idea of apocalypse to prey on people's fears and anxieties. It can bring out all the most cult-like elements of religion. And yet, despite all these red flags that this might be a really bad topic to preach about, I have found apocalypse to be a useful word during this past week, during this entire challenging summer, in fact. I grew up in the 1990s. Do you remember the 90s? It was a time when the most famous television show, a show I would watch every evening before I started my homework, billed itself proudly as the show about nothing. It was a time when after the collapse of the Soviet Union, experts predicted that we had reached the end of history. The end of history. There were no more alternatives to neoliberal capitalism. The world order had been secured. Now flash forward to 2020. As many of you know, my wife is expecting, we're expecting our second child. She's due this coming Wednesday. And at least three of you in this congregation I know are busy caring for brand new grandchildren. Little Autumn and little Aneke and little Ama. I love how well those names go together. And this world that all these children are entering is not a world that has reached the end of history. Far from it. It's not a world that will be represented by television shows that are about nothing. Instead, it's a world still reeling from a global pandemic. Over a thousand people a day still dying from COVID-19 in the U.S. It's a world starting to really suffer the extreme weather caused by climate change as wildfires so early in the season rage to the south and north of us as Tropical storms tear through Texas and Louisiana. A hurricane even ripped through Iowa earlier this month. That didn't used to happen. And it's also a world full of protests and uprisings in response to the continued terrorizing of people of color in this country. One of these crises would be enough right now. One of these would be enough for us to look into the eyes of the newest human beings on this planet and say, you are going to have your work cut out for you. In Greek, the word for apocalypse means literally uncovering. That's what it means, revealing. That's where we get our word for revelation. So to say that we live in apocalyptic times is to say that we're living through a time when certain things are being revealed to us things we might have forgotten, things we might have never known before. And so I wonder, friends, what feels like it's being uncovered in your life right now? Maybe apocalypse is a word to use to describe the reckoning that many of you are taking up this summer in examining your white privilege, in finding ways to become actively anti-racist. Isn't that a revelation? 
Maybe there's apocalypse in the way that COVID-19 has caused us all to live a little more in the here and now, more locally. We can't take many trips, so we're checking in more on our neighbors, going shopping for them or letting them shop for us. We're learning the names of birds, learning the names of flowers. Isn't that a revelation? Writing from his own apocalypse 2,000 years ago as someone who went from persecutor to persecuted for following Jesus, Paul gives us some good advice. Whatever is being uncovered in your life right now, he says, love from the center of who you are. Run for your life from evil. Then he says something even wiser, I think. Don't burn out. Don't burn out. It would be so easy, given the pressures of these times, just to slap on some headphones and tune out the world. Or conversely, to try to do too much and become scattered and feel guilty. Don't, Paul says. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Speaking of fueled and aflame, I want to end today with some words, some lines from a friend and mentor of mine, the poet Christian Wyman. I've mentioned Chris to you before. I got to know him about 15 years ago, right when he'd just been diagnosed with an incurable blood cancer. He's managed to stay alive through a variety of treatments. But Chris is someone, I think, whose life is very intimate with apocalypse. Being rushed to the ER with his twin baby daughters, bone marrow transplants, experimental cocktails of drug treatments. And Chris wrote these lines that I'm about to share during one moment when he really couldn't see his way to the next part of his life. His world felt like it was ending, much like we might feel some days. He starts out this way. I do not know how to come closer to God except by standing where a world is ending for one man. It is still dark, and for an hour I have listened to the breathing of a woman I love beyond my ability to love. Praise to the pain scalding us toward each other, the grief beyond which, please God, she will live and thrive. He's lying in his bed early in the morning. He's looking at his wife. He's imagining the end, and he's thinking of her. And the poem would be beautiful if it were to end there, but because Chris is a person of faith, because God has this strange claim upon his heart, he has to add one more sentence. And he goes on to say, And praise to the light that is not yet the dawn in which one bird believes, crying not as if there had been no night, but as if there were no night in which it had not been. Beloved people, over these next two months, while I'm away on my parental leave, as we welcome new lives into the world, as we care for lives that are reaching their conclusion, as we continue to adjust to the ending of some worlds and the beginning of others, may we know the love of God who walks with us through everything, crying not as if there had been no night, but as if there were no night in which it had not been. Hallelujah. Amen. Join me, join me singing this haunting hymn called What Wondrous Love Is This? Oh,
dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking. laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul Christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the Lamb I will sing I will sing to God and to the Lamb join the theme I will sing I will sing while millions join the theme I will sing and when from death I'm free I'll sing on I'll sing on and when from death I'm free I'll sing on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be, and through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity I'll sing. Beloved people, would you join with me now as we move into a spirit of prayer? I want to ask for prayers, first of all, for a few students of Concha Delgado's who have passed away recently. Prayers for their families and for Concha as she mourns their losses. We also pray today for Susan, the father of, of excuse me, we pray today for Stuart, the father of Susan Yord, who is dealing with respiratory failure. God, may you help keep him comfortable, and may you be with him and all who love him, especially Ron and Susan at this time. Let's continue now as we take a deep breath, as we accept the presence of the living God into our hearts and minds. Holy One, we come to you today with so much to lift up, God, for all those blessings that you continue to heap upon us, blessings of family and friends, blessings of beauty, blessings of comfort, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for all the ways that this church has continued to respond for our leaders behind the scenes, our treasurer, our moderator, our vice moderator, our entire council, for those guest worship leaders over the next two months, who will step into the virtual pulpit and provide your people with their words. For our guest pastoral care providers, Julie and Barry, available to respond in the case of emergencies. For all the people who continue to tune into these videos and participate in this body of Christ, we're so thankful. Holy One, we pray today for all people who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially all those people across our country and world who continue to be affected by COVID-19. God, help us remember that this pandemic is far, far from going away. And as much as certain people might want to put it in their rearview mirror, help us, God, to keep track, to be witnesses. And God, may you send your love upon all those people who are mourning and grieving in this time 
as we move towards September, as schools have already opened in many places, as teachers are adjusting to the new demands placed upon them, as parents and children are adjusting to this new world. May you be with them, God. May you guide them. May you please keep everyone safe. Lastly, Holy One, we take a moment now to lift up those people and places that are in our own hearts. As you're participating in this video from home, I invite you now to speak aloud prayers for those people that you're thinking of today. Almighty God, again and again, throughout the history of your relationship with your peoples, you have been there. In times of crisis, you have been God, almighty and sovereign. We thank you for your continued presence. We ask that your love would fall upon all those people who need it today. And we ask, O oh God, lastly, that you would continue to guide us. Help us be your followers in this tender time as we raise our voices now together, saying those words which your Son Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to continue in worship with me now as we take a moment to give something back. If you need to pause this video to go and find your checkbook, I invite you to do so you are invited to give something back to support the ministries of Arlington Community Church, especially in this difficult season where we continue to face shortfalls due to uh, lack of rental groups, uh, due to the schools that we're hosting, um, struggling for attendance. We would be so grateful for what you're able to give back to ensure that our ministries uh, can continue. Holy God, may you bless all the gifts all the time and talent and treasure that we offer back. May they go towards bringing your vision of peace and love and justice to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. can show what can happen in a moment's inspiration. Jerome Davis was asked to write a piece for his father, who was a pastor. He walked into their church at 1.30 a.m., and he felt the presence of Jesus and the, the church area being holy ground. He sat down at the piano, and 15 minutes later, he came up with this gospel song uh, that was voted uh, best song of the year in 1988 by the Gospel Music Association. It's called Holy Ground. We'll sing it a couple times through.
Thank you so much to everyone who participated in worship today, those who shared their tremendous musical gifts, as well as everyone uh, who was watching and following along from home. I have to say, I got a little emotional filming this service, even though the sanctuary is empty as normal, just thinking it was the last time I would get to be with you all uh, for the next eight Sundays. I'm so thankful to everyone who is filling in uh, to preach the word. I encourage you all to keep tuning in. Each week, there'll be a different guest preacher and worship leader, many familiar faces from our congregation, as well as some old friends who will come back to say hello. And very thankful as well to Barry and Julie for providing pastoral care during these two months. Stay tuned to your emails. You will all be some of the first to hear when uh, Kit and I have some news to share. Hopefully in not too many days. It really is coming right up. So let's prepare to go forward now into a world full of endings and full of new beginnings, knowing that the love of God walks with us at all times. May God bless you and keep you. May God make her face to shine upon you. May God be merciful unto you and grant you peace. We'll see you soon. Amen.